Hi, welcome to the Underhold. I'm Robert Gresham. You can follow me here at Rob C. Gresham on Twitter. I'm Sinclair. Uh, at Illegal Priest is my Twitter handle. The little bit I do use right now. Hopefully, in the future, I'll be using a little bit, little bit more. Yeah, hopefully. So, uh, I don't know. I try to stay somewhat active on Twitter, but whenever I get on there, it's just right, all the crazy hate. Not a lot of movie talk. So. I'm on there right now for wrestling stuff because there's this big wrestling event in Saudi Arabia <laughs> and all the wrestlers are. Oh, isn't that the women are get to wrestle? They got to wrestle, but then also all the wrestlers got stuck in Saudi so they all Arabia have to full and extra. Day. Oh, they wear like shirts and like full Jesus clothing Christ. over everything. <laughs> uh, but they got stuck in Saudi Arabia an extra day and everybody was like, oh, did McMahon not get paid money and this is like a weird <laughs> waving contest thing? All the camels die like Jake the Snake Roberts' snakes would die on the transit. <laughs> Like, he was just saying all blood. Like, how's your snake? What's it? I was like, I got a new one every fucking match. Yeah, I got this Christ. thing from Travis of this bag of, like, the old 80s wrestling figures. <laughs> kind of, like, big. Oh, I love those ones, ones dude. Yeah, they so look, like, this big. Yeah, I got them. Oh, I love those. Those were my hollow. Fucking my Christmas. This huge bag of them. Okay, nice. anyway. Yeah, we got to play little wrestling games. That's what we should put in, in, the, in the background. Yeah. So right now, it doesn't look great, but we're just. We're switching some stuff up. Uh, this is the, the soft reboot. Yeah, well, I would, I'd call it season two, because I'm proud of all the other uh, stuff. Yeah, season one, you know, we just, you know, help us reclassify all the tags, mm -hmm. too, you know. Uh, but obviously, family man here at the house, you've seen our guest, Rosie, uh, mm -hmm. my daughter, pop up a couple times. So uh, we have to do this now late at night in a different room mm -hmm. to avoid interruptions by the children. Mostly because of YouTube's new rules about advertising show if you have children in there. Have you know, noticed yeah, that? I didn't know that. Yeah, all the kids' shows got, like, just smashed. Oh, I think because I Because they were, uh, about that. Yeah. they're basically being paid to advertise, mm -hmm. and they weren't, you can't tell, you can't get a four-year-old to understand that this entire review is paid for, mm -hmm. which this review is not going to be paid for by anyone. Except for Joel Cola. Yeah, well, Joel Cola, they gotta send some more Joel, I think the old address might be getting all the Joel Cola. So, Joel, I'll mm -hmm. tweet directly to you, uh, Got the president on the Twitter handle there. Uh, forget his name because Mr. Jolterson. Mr. Jolter Jolt Jolterson. <laughs> Jules, Jules Jolterson. Uh, he's French. <laughs> so yeah, so we're gonna talk about season two of The Tick, streaming now on Amazon Prime. Yes, the final season. Final the season. Tick. That's that's always disheartening to yeah. find out like midway through a show. Sometimes I'll lose all enthusiasm for continuing. I'm like, oh, what am I investing in this for? It's like when you're dating someone and you're like, ah, oh, those three dates meant nothing. <laughs> you know, if there's not going to be two more where I get pussy. And, and so some of this, since we don't have a season one review, we're going to do a little bit of an overview of the tick uh, and season one. And this will be pretty quick. So basically the tick is created mid 80s for like, uh, a mail order comic book company mm. and it was you know superhero parodies by a young kid you know he's like 18 at the time when he created the comic and then you know it took on a little bit of a life of its own until eventually this parody uh, comes sometimes yeah. scam, yeah. and you know it was the black and white boom and there were some limited series and stuff but it wasn't ongoing and eventually got picked up during the ninja turtle craze where everything was getting bought up oh okay kind of and maybe a little bit after that it's but. basically like the channels wanted to make cartoons out of any property they could find just about yeah yeah and and you know ninja turtles was a black and white comic that was successful made a cartoon the tick was toys a black and white comic uh and so Almost like Dark Horse. Like, Dark Horse was a comic built out of uh, Things from Another World, whatever it was called before. Yeah, Pegasus. Pegasus. So, yeah. you know, it, very similar in, in its origin. Uh, because Mile High Comics, I think, was the origin of the tick. Could be. I recently yeah. saw something about, it, like, even the original Pegasus store closing down in Wisconsin. Yeah. So, comic industry, man, it's getting torn down. People aren't buying nothing. So then it became the cartoon show uh, in 94. And there was a couple seasons of that, and it was very well done. And that has been... Yeah, I remember catching those on Fox. I like, yeah. waiting to watch uh, Batman the Animated Series. Mm -hmm. And depending on... Like the new episode. Scheduling, yeah. sometimes the tick was on. Mm -hmm. and then But sometimes it would be the Saturday show. So it was just Fox could never get their shit together. And it seemed to do fine. It didn't last too long. But kid shows don't necessarily, because, you know, kids, if they're at that demographic, then they age out pretty quick. Yeah, and parodies, kids don't yeah. get that. Yeah. Because it's too literal. Like, they're like, uh... There's, 
They're not understanding what is being parodied. Yeah, but it was also one of those early shows of, like, cartoons changing from Transformers to, like, adult humor. Like the Simpsons kind of. And Tiny Toons and stuff. Oh, yeah. Where stuff started to become more intelligent in its humor. Yeah, I felt like it was um, for the college kids almost. Like, kids bit. were still... We were still watching cartoons. Yeah. So some kids in... There must have been a group maybe older than us at the time. Yeah. I don't know. We could look into that. If you know... I mean, I was kind I of know. at that age where it's like almost too old to watch cartoons, but still wanted to. So looking yeah. for something that still resonated. I wasn't going to watch Rugrats, but yeah. King of the Hill. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. This is... And The Simpsons, I mean, definitely. That's been on since I was like 10 years old. Yeah. So so it Jesus ended Christ. up surviving for a while by being in reruns just over and over over time. Like every couple of years, it ends up on like Comedy Central or mm -hmm. some other like cartoon re rerun channel or something so it's had a long a lot of life. people probably also remember the t the other tv show the the, yeah then the, around 2000 there that's was where a i new first Fox remember show. that that patch warburton guy from who seemed born to play the ticket yeah right? the voice was perfect yeah. i thought like the whole reason he became cronk mm -hmm. in like the disney shows was that i didn't really know about his seinfeld connection at the time yeah. I thought he was just the tick. I'm just going to double check that we're recording, even though we're in the middle of a recording. Yeah, we're seven minutes in. Looking awesome. good. Looking good. You know, we always got to check these new new episodes. Yeah. You can see we got the new backdrop. I look like uh, 80, 21-year-old girl's bedroom that's like in the crystals and, and some essential oils. Yeah. Some really bad Sublime playing. I don't care if Sublime fans... But now that we're we're at the Warburton phase, that you know it lasted just a couple episodes and had a DVD and stuff. Uh, what was clear by this point is there's a lot of tropes to the Tick that are always present, but not many. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of changes. Almost every version, the comics, the cartoons, the TV show, almost all have completely different characters except for the main ones of Arthur Dot, the Tick. Yeah, because what I remember from the TV show was. Uh... Mainly Batman will, because I knew yeah. the. I think the actor was also on news radio mm -hmm. as like the Latin guy that everyone. Oh, he was a good comedic actor. He's yeah, I always himself. liked him, and it, but I always remember as like that that guy. I can't remember his name offhand. Which is again different but. from the cartoon, which their Batman parody was the Flater Mouse, who mm -hmm. was that's a completely different Batman parody. The Flater Mouse is like a guy who is afraid of everything, so he mm -hmm. somehow finds an excuse I mean, to not name, be part. The Freddy Mouse, yeah. you know, the scary even cat or whatever. So he ends up not being there when the action happens. He comes back, he's like, oh darn, I missed out on everything. <laughs> and then Batman <laughs> Well. sounds like me and all my kids' births. Yeah. Batman Well is still a Batman parody, but he's a womanizer, essentially, or, you know, he's smooth, Batman Well. That's what I don't get why they don't play that up in the movies yeah. more. I mean, Christian Bale kind of comes in with the two models. In the Batman movie, but I'm like, isn't Bruce Wayne always banging? You would think something crazy. Uh, yeah, but also like, because he's supposed to keep the Playboy image up. Crystal, or I hope they Christian cover that Bale in the next movie. Christian Bale and Batman also wasn't very smart. It seemed like too. It's just weird. Yeah, bit. he was like, he's not a detective. He was just this like, uh, but his mouth was open. That's why whenever I see the Pete Holmes ones, I like they find no difference. <laughs> he was butthead or Beavis. I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tell me what I want to do. Yeah, I hated the Batman voice. I hope, from what I hear, the Pattinson's, Pattinson's Batman voice is going to be the foe's uh, lighthouse voice. Or it's, some type of inspiration. Yeah, it's going to be cool to see Batman the pirate. My favorite part of Lighthouse is Willem Dafoe has this long, like, two-minute speech. Crazy voice. And a crazy voice and crazy dialogue. It's, I'm calling it now. That's the, it, That Batman, the, the Batman coming out with Matt Reeves, I think it's the long Halloween. So, anyway, okay. back to our, uh, yeah. the Tick analysis. Yeah. yeah, this was, what, nine episodes of the first season. Or the only season of the whole yeah. 2000 Tick. And then just gone. I still remember, and I don't know if it was from the Tick or not, I had this old goat figure of yours. And like oh, that's from a different, that's from, uh... uh Is that from Madman, maybe? No, that's, that's from a different comic called, uh, Quantum and Woody. Oh, okay. I think every time I say that, I oh, this Tick, you're always telling me Quantum and Woody, because I remember yeah. you saying it now. Okay, so, yeah, that's not the goat that's in... The Tick series. Yeah, and it, it, it's a different humor. It's still funny stuff. So yeah, Amazon so, what, launched this new reboot. Yeah. 2016. And still all of these series done by Ben Ben Edlund. Ben Edlund. And you said he wrote for Venture Brothers? Yeah, it that? sounds like he wrote, 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 written for Venture Brothers. He wrote for Whedon, Josh Whedon. 
uh, like quite a bit of television credit. So he's part. You know all the cool dialogue that Joss Whedon takes credit for. <laughs> well, it's like he, you know, he was writing before probably probably before proper writing training, mm. but he used the tick to really parlay his way into gigs to where like he would learn more his style. craft better and better. And it's clear in everything up to now, um, this new tick has a lot more setups and payoffs and humor and stuff like the that. The costume's definitely good. I mean, superhero costumes have come a long yeah. way since Meteor Man mm -hmm. and fucking Blank Man and uh, oh, he did Powers. Night Man. He wrote for Powers a bit in Gotham. Okay. So it's still a lot of superhero stuff, but it's been varied. Okay. Usually not nothing too heavy. But it's not like only superhero stuff, but when he comes to it, it pretty, seems pretty to be much. kind of jokey. Uh, maybe a little jokey, but Gotham wasn't really jokey, but just not heavy. I, I checked out a job. I liked Gotham. I think I just got to a point where I'm like, oh, now I'm uh, 20,000 episodes behind. I can't catch up. You know, like, how many seasons are there? Like, 15? I can't, I can't do it. Five. Yeah. It's like Supernatural. I gave up after season seven. And I know that there actually is 15 seasons of that. So I just quit after season seven. I'm like, ah. Once my daughter started liking it, I'm like, mm, I don't know anymore. But, like, some of the stuff of, like, you always have different characters, but some similar archetypes. Uh, with season one, you had a big storyline that had some of the stuff that was taken from some previous storylines, like the very large man. So there would, there would be yeah, occasional stuff of taking a... There's occasionally, like, an old storyline that they still recycle a little bit, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel like directly lifted. It's like, oh, here's this idea, this funny thing you of feel the influence. A a very large person becoming the threat. But <laughs> there's a new there's a new twist to it yeah, that makes it worthwhile. So it's not a very large in the art cartoon, it's the very body large, positive man. Well yeah. <laughs> so in you know in the old cartoon the joke is oh there's just a very large dope walking around. How do we deal with this guy just accidentally destroying stuff? But then in the new show He's naked. <laughs> you know, that just makes it funnier. And it's that would be funnier. Yeah. You're like, oh, look at that giant dong. You know, so it's not necessarily that they ran out of ideas. It's like, oh, well, this is an old idea that we could do something <laughs> different with. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Yeah. The Tick's got a lot of funny moments. Yeah. I definitely enjoyed the new Tick. So, like, now jumping into season twos. I was going to say, season one's about the very large band. It, it, oh, yeah. We did big, quite good. Basically, that's the main threat, adventures. Though, so yeah. I remember it being... And Superion uh, becomes a thing of their Superman parody, but it becomes like he's uh, taken over, or he, he has some issues, but uh, there's the Terror, who's another ongoing character that's been in a lot of series. Uh, but it, it we becomes... We say he was inspired by... Kind of looks like Magneto, but mm -hmm. he's not really act like... act. He doesn't act like Magneto so much. He's just ridiculous, like... In the cartoon show, yeah, his son I kind of was kept wondering Terry. if he was supposed to be Doctor Doom, but without powers. But I was uh, like, I don't know the helmet. Yeah. Just maybe I could figure it out which guy. Sometimes you do that too often in parody. You're like, who is that supposed to be parody yeah. of? Because like, I think the Tick is the parody of the the word bubble. Some yeah yeah, and I that's and not every character in Tick stuff is a direct parody of something. Like yeah. there's ridic ridiculous just ridiculousness. So there's a character called Gazundtite or something. He has super <laughs> allergies. Like, that's not a power. Yeah, well, that's a, like a parody of, like, your name. My name is uh, Firestorm. Why? Because I shoot firestorms. Yeah. Well, they have like, the running uh, guy who has the power of just running, running as fast as ver ten very fast men. <laughs> you know, because so, there's so many They're running. all Ethiopians. Instead of having, like, this is the Flash and this is Quicksilver, you know, since it's, it's such a trope of the running guy, yeah. they just literally go, this is the, the running best running guy. guy, I think, still. Uh, freight train or whatever. <laughs> A-train. A-train, yeah. Fucking the boys. That guy. I mean, cooler. Re that was just such a better reinterpretation of the comic. It was mm -hmm. like better than the comic. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if I can say the ticks better than the comic because it's it a little bit of red. It is better. Strips and all over. Yeah. 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 There was smaller. This is more focused. This is on smaller storylines. Story line. Edlin, you know, he was just a comic fan who's like, this is what I notice and I think is funny in comics. Like what I was catching on with season two, at least, mm -hmm. it's um, at least it's it's one whole story. Yeah, it's season whole the whole story. ten episodes is one story, so you get season that Amazon like that too, but... feeling. Like mm -hmm. all of their shows seem to be like that. Yeah, and I almost felt like this could have been done episodically smaller, mm -hmm. 
just could have been, okay, let's take care of this weird joke premise or this storytelling um, tool that we're going to try to make a, a little parody about. Mm -hmm. And that could have been contained in each episode. Introduce a new character per episode. Um, and that's kind of what the it. first TV show was a little bit like. And maybe that's why I, I thought that could have been better. Even though, the, I guess, the first se season didn't have that. You gotta catch the audience, you know. And telling a whole storyline, it definitely wants you to have to binge it. Mm -hmm. It says, okay, you can binge this whole show in two days, three days. Mm -hmm. It's 20 to 24 minute episodes. Or it's all single camera, which... Yeah. So it looks like... The Good Place or any of those other shows that are really funny right now. And I think single camera you can do a lot with because you can control where the audience has to look. Yeah. So you get real, you catch things. And the ticket yeah, has a lot of those kind of throwaway jokes that you have to catch. There's a there, uh, there's a joke where somebody's in the same area, but one character doesn't realize that. And so they mention that character. They go, look at this character. But they're saying that like, You'll see the guy actually over to look. Yeah, you see like, actually look, and you're like, yeah, that was a, that was it a brings good. a performance. I yeah. think when you have a character that's so larger than like like a car, a living cartoon. And character. I didn't realize I would like this actor as the tick so much. Yeah, when I first well, I did because I was so history. he was so like what you imagined would be the mm. perfect actor. You're like, how is he not involved in this? And then you find out, oh yeah, he's a producer. Yeah, but then it's like I like this guy even more than Warner Burton's performance. I yeah. really love this guy. Yeah, I liked it, it because Warner Brothers... Peter uh, something of it or something? What's his name? Yeah, it's uh, Serfinovich. Serfinovich. And it's Peter? Yeah, Peter Serfinovich. Peter Serfinovich. Mm -hmm. like, he's basically the first thing I saw him... What I remembered him from, because I always kept going, like, who is this dude? He's a character actor in a lot of things now. But uh, we caught it earlier. He's the roommate from Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. Right? The dickhead roommate that ends up being the naked zombie, I think, mm -hmm. later. So, you know, he's a nice guy. Uh, but then Gal Gardens of the Galaxy... He becomes like one of the uh, dudes that are in the the Nova Corps. Oh, okay. And yeah. I think he's like, they got my dick message. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, we got your dick message. <laughs> you know, he's like, it's not the John C. Riley one, but he's yeah. like, okay, I like. He was kind of more gung ho to after them, <laughs> you know. And so, I, I've always liked his performance. He's a little bit intense, but you could see there was he knew comedic timing. Yeah. And then to find out, like, oh yeah, he had his own sketch show over in England for two years. Straight up call the Peter Serfinovich show, mm -hmm. you know. So, and there's yeah. certain things that, that are dude. tick tropes that he does well. Like the tick has things where he gets weirdly obsessive with things sometimes. Of like, I'm gonna in in this one for instance, there's a gag. He becomes obsessed with being a dad. Uh, yeah, that goes for a couple episodes. Yeah. I think, and, and that's funny. The callbacks to it yeah. is really good. Um, there's it. It rewards you for binge watching. Because mm -hmm. you catch a joke that pays off 30 minutes later or 40 minutes later. Or four episodes And that's episodes two later. episodes later. Because in our time, it's 30, 40 minutes. That's literally two more episodes. Yeah. yeah. So definitely it rewards you for binge watching. Um, it's got a few other characters that, or actors in it. Mm -hmm. uh, look down my notes. We got it's uh, Valerie Curry. Yeah. Plays Dot. And she's in a lot of That's stuff. Arthur's she's, sister. She's and Arthur. the most. Played by Griffin Newman, mm -hmm. who uh, I guess he's stand-up comic. Uh, at one point was, the, you know, 2012's comic to watch hmm. from I think uh, Montreal or one of those festivals. So he's a comedian at his own he's show. Pretty much exactly what you would ima yeah. imagine Arthur. It's a perfect see. casting yeah. for it. He he physically embodies the character, uh, not just because he's short and. So Sometimes Arthur's looking. fat, but just short and weak. I always remember him having the fat pot So this Arthur's person. skinny, but that's it. You know, that's the big yeah. difference. But it was, the, it was the literally size difference. Yeah. You know, uh, but he played the character so well. And because of his seriousness, and then, like, he was, like, he was the serious cop mm -hmm. to the, the off-the-wall cop, the, not the Riggs, but the black one. <laughs> Right, uh, and so that that works, and because the the guy playing the tick, mm -hmm. uh, Serfinovix is so freaking. I use the word earnest. Yeah. You're like, he really is like, wow, what is this? There's like a childlike optimism yeah. to what he's doing. Uh, discoveries because he has no memory. Each discovery is like, wow, a joy comes with it. Mm -hmm. 
and, and optimism. With this kind of goofy, over the top, and then you, you add that, that type of acting on top of the usual tick tropes of like long speeches with really bad metaphors and taking the these right. bad, already bad metaphors uh, way too far. The Isn't really that? goofy superhero statements of yeah. "We hold citizen." He plays that so well that when he does it, you're like, "Okay, there's even and, commanding and this voice is... to it that still comes off." And I, I have to almost go back to the, to season one to see how much there is of it in season one, too. But season two, definitely, there's lots of little tells of, like, we're satirizing the character arcs like, of the, comics. Yeah. So like, it's definitely the trope. Yeah. Like, instead of the deconstructions that keep happening all the time, like Watchmen and the boys, yeah. uh, this one is definitely a... A deconstruction of the storytelling of comics, yeah. of how they're told. And this is the like, soap opera that's been going on for 100 years. Tick literally tell, uh, saying a character has a checkered past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your you're checkered gonna, past. You know, you're, you got to be a good that or Listen to the voice, of you, the good voice of your ear. <laughs> it's like so like, literal in the way they explain it. Or like one character. Such good payoffs. Uh, overkill, who's like a Punisher type guy, yeah, like, or he's supposed to be Deathstroke. You know, he definitely has that Batman vigilante voice. guy. <laughs> yeah, his eyes kept throwing me off. I was like, "Why are his eyes all fucked?" He lost up? him. Super syphilis in season one. Super syphilis, like that. That's the scariest sounding type of anything. <laughs> like if that was the disease, I'd be like, "Who is a member of the Blue Man forever. Group?" Yeah, and so that's what we find out is this dude was, he's not just a member, but a long-time member. <laughs> he's been around, that means he was probably playing with Fred Armisen back in the day, but Fred Armisen was part of the Blue Man Group, because this guy's a long-running Blue Man Group guy. Uh-huh. So that's his deep, and I saw a Blue, Grand, Blue Man Group once with uh, David Bowie at the Gorge. Oh. Right? So I could have been watching this cat playing these fucking drums where all this paint's flying in the air, <laughs> right? It was sick, especially if you're a bunch, on a bunch of, like, LSD, <laughs> or, or the, like, you're just really upset that the girl you thought was invited you out there to bang with, she just brought you because she needed five people to throw 50 bucks up each to get her ass in. To this shit. But she drove. So, you know, what, what we but do there's for There's like a, a great moment where like somebody mentions all this ridiculous character stuff about these multiple characters. Like, mm-hmm. I think like people coming back to life or something like that. I mean, and that trope's even in there. So, like, I, yeah. I knew that yeah. was going to happen. And, and she mentions that and then he's just like, so what? You know, like, yeah. to, it's just normal. This is how our world this, works. Yeah, this is superheroes. Like, some of the superhero world's building stuff kind of was hilarious. The idea that a villain just has to put on a superhero mask, change their identity, and I'm a good guy, which happens in comic books all the yeah. time. And it's a literal like, It's the amendment. It's the, yeah, it's the amendment 28. <laughs> I'm like, ah. I would have liked to see, like, amendment people out there holding signs. It's our goddamn right to put on a mask. Yeah. <laughs> right, you'll see that in Watchmen. <laughs> or like, how how could they figure out that I'm Miss Lint? I'm wearing a mask, and she has, she has a her scar. face is exposed. S- yeah, most of her face is exposed, and she yeah. has the Miss Lint scar on her face that's exposed. Literally, <laughs> like the it's so obvious. Any there's some really good. Uh, she is pretty here. good. I remember her from Southland. Yeah. I actually watched that show on TNT because I thought that one was one of the cooler uh, cop shows. You know, and uh, the the ridiculousness of the world helps as so much. From Gotham. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's the part where she's in her hotel room, mm-hmm. and they set up this whole thing. Yeah, and this the hotel room's a dump. That's what I love yeah. the best. Is she's like this giant supervillain, right? Like yeah. a big league supervillain. Yeah, hiding out, pretending to be a big league. Well, she's superhero. laying low or laying low, which is the literal name of the hotel, right? Yeah, which also oh, explains so how. The neighbors, there's this thing of the neighbors being a big plot point because uh, basically just imagine that there's no reason why these, why two characters in a story should cross at a certain point. Yeah, you always like, see that in the, the yeah. that's how you connect the group. Yeah. Like, oh, they're in the hotel together. And so there's important people in the hotel next to her, but because it's the lay low hotel and these other people are also laying yeah. low. And it's a piece, it's a dump. Yeah. And the it lay is low a is dump. a play on words of like it being like a Hawaiian type word. Yeah. And, I wish we yeah, you have the one volcano imagery, but I was like, are they like lay low? I need more Hawaiian imagery. Otherwise yeah. I'm like, this is like a obvious joke or yeah. like even 
like hung far low kind of a joke. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm like, I get it, Asians. But it still, it worked within the world to, to help the joke instead of just being eye rolly bad. It's like, oh no, this works because of this weird world they're in. <laughs> yeah, which I don't think you would buy. Yeah. Without the performances of the two leads. Mm -hmm. Without the earnestness of the tick and his, his lust for life and the him really enjoying what he's doing because that's what it is he's enjoying it yeah. and you, you could tell that he's having a good time not the act I mean the actors obviously have to have a good time because he's yeah. translating that joy through this character but how damn serious Arthur is yeah like that guy he is serious he looks like he's about to cry half the time like I wondered if he was acting with that shake you sometimes get when you're like <laughs> telling somebody something for the I don't know why this is important yeah. You know, like, he came off really well, especially, like, in his scenes opposite uh, Miss Lind, mm -hmm. when he was just like, oh, this chick, yeah, you can't see her right through her mask, <laughs> yeah. to John Yeah, Hodgman. he's so serious with, with and I knew, like, like oh. I have a, now here's where we're going to get to spoilers, because I mean, we're we kind of been doing spoilers already, but I knew John Hodgman was the villain immediately, Yeah, without having, because he is the villain in real life. I don't mean like he's a bad guy, but like he plays that character all the time. Yeah. He's always the I'm the crazy millionaire. I think Google spoiled or, for for me when I just saw that he, in the casting and they put his character name underneath. And there was oh, yeah, two like, character names. Oh, so, you know, like once you see two character names, you're like, oh, well, that's a plot twist or the something. The dude who plays a uh, fucking I'm trying to remember his name. Executioner parody. Overkill. Overkill. He had three names in the. Description oh, yeah. too. See, one he had written down a straight shooter, which I don't know is that something for season one. Uh, I think that was his Aegis name, ah, which is okay. the the shield. And I like group. that name because I mean it's yeah. straight up being shield, mm -hmm. so that's funny. You yeah. Know? So if you didn't know that, uh, but I knew that also from Vampire the Masquerade days, <laughs> you know, super nerd time. Uh, so I, I mean, and the actor playing that like had his Aegis. Mm -hmm. Who with his crazy fucking chest piece that he was feeding mice into? <laughs> yeah, it's like it awesome. It's a black hole. I for couldn't a figure heart. out who that was. I looked up the cast name. I didn't see him in there. I couldn't remember his name. That's what I was wondering. Like, is he just some Rutherford guy that, was that the actor literally the has character. has bow legs, or was he trying to have? Bow yeah, legs? I mean, that was because so it was funny to watch. You're like, whoa, has he been sitting yeah. on a horse all day? Yeah. You know, because maybe he was. It was trying to parody. But he was John good. Lane. He was I, good. I liked him. I kept thinking, this is if they um, in the boys. Mm -hmm. If they need an older version of Homelander, boom, this guy, he looks just like the, yeah. the actor playing Homelander, but older. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't think digitally did him. I know they got that power. Like, if they can digitally make the kids from It look a little bit younger, why couldn't they did that to Sarah Connor in the Big Dark Fate movie? I mean, I that's felt what like, they tried to do with Gemini Man with Will well, Smith. I felt like he was like, my great-grandma was going to come out there with a... Giant machine guns? Like, I don't believe that. She, she, yeah. I've watched videos where a lady shoot shotguns and they blow out the arms. She's gonna come out with a, a no. I just like no. Uh, it's too crazy. My thing on Can't dark, fate, dark I do, fate. I do think that that the we'll, most entertaining stuff was we'll click up here for Sinclair spoiling Arnold dark fate. and 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 her interacting, but I don't think it enhanced the Terminator movies. But it's like they were I was old man on and like a dog. Right, he just was, he's like, I've got to Felix now because <laughs> I've been around the humans for a long time. I've like killed John. I, I didn't know the Terminator. Let's click here for a clear spoiler review of the Terminator. But uh, Jesus, old people, use the, the this guy who was the head of Shield or yeah. Ages, older actor, but he looked like a John Wayne. He yeah, looked he like was he cool. was probably a badass in like Rambo movies back in the day, and I couldn't find his proper. Uh, credits on IMBD mm -hmm. or am I saying that right? Internet. No, but it's okay. They know what you're talking about. Internet uh, BDSM. <laughs> 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 it's like, you know, what? I was on the wrong channel. I don't get it. I was just trying to find out what Bruce Willis's CV was. <laughs> and I see you know, you're getting zipper masks in the mail. I think this is one of the most domination database yeah. of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> just pop up. Huh. It's just a bunch of Jeffrey Epstein and Brian <laughs> fucking singer Brian videos. Singer fetish videos. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I didn't know they made it. This is a different X-Men I ever saw. A Jeepers, just... Jeepers Creepers Rupture Spectrum article. <laughs> yeah. That's why New Mutants has never come out. You're like, oh God, these poor kids. <laughs> I keep wondering, I'm like, I've seen that trailer for three years now. I'm like, 
The, the actress who plays Arya is 20... Or Arya Stark. And I don't know who she's playing I was just in coming in. It, that's going to be so just dumped on It's got to be class. trash. It's got to be such bad movie that it hasn't come out yet. There's no reason. It's supposed to be a horror movie. Yeah. As Marvel wants to make its first horror movie. Yeah, they made the Swamp Thing and it was great. Well, that wasn't Marvel, that was Fox. Oh, that's right. Fox. So it's just going to be dumped. I bet you it got dumped because of this. Whenever a studio changes over, anything in the works just gets dumped because... Well, it's already done. They don't want to give credit to the people who are fired. But it's done. Yeah, so it's a shelved movie. It's going to be one of those... Uh, it's totally coming out on Disney+. Plus. Like, this is just uh, something... It'll be like 2 in the morning. Like, we showed it. We'll see it at Walmart in like five years. Or It'll be like in January, this is a reason to have Disney+. Plus. It's something, a new big movie that's... There's going to be a lot of reasons to have Disney+. Plus. First, for the giant big brother head that will be able to be in the... <laughs> And look at my activities all the time. Make sure I'm giving Bob Iger like everything he needs. <laughs> I'm like, I, I would rather give my money to Bob Iger than to who's the other giant overlord of our corporate gods? Fucking like the Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> Damn him for canceling Dick. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's all your fault, Bezos. He's like. <laughs> By canceling the tick, I don't have to go give my workers any uh, benefits this month. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the gags with Superion. Yeah, I like... So it's hard to go from manager. Superion's... Him to... Or from the boys yeah. is perfect as Deconstruction Superman to this one. Yeah. More of like a... What am I doing here? Like, an ungrateful Superman. Yeah. He's like, where's my... He's an ungrateful Superman who treats humanity as children. Yeah. Like very patronizing. I'm here to crater. <laughs> yeah, like literal. Uh, and he looks great as Superman. He's not yeah. that muscular, which I like. To throw Like you were saying, throw back to the Christopher Reeves. There are so many Christopher Reeves specific Superman jokes. Yeah, um, you see it. You there's the, it. the Lois Lane flying date, which was a really good gag. <laughs> that was great. Uh, uh, the internal monologue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm obsessing about uh, attempting to turn back time by <laughs> going around the earth. I know we made the joke about he just fly around the earth backwards and he's like, well, I, well, I haven't tried it yet. That, that <laughs> last shot, I swear, is a Superman 2 reference, too. Yeah, like, oh, with the cubes coming down? Mm -hmm. It was like prison. So, like, there's a lot of good cliffhangers. I think that they end the show perfectly to cliffhanging to go, okay, I'm interested in a season three. Um, and then there there is no season three. Mm -hmm. So, womp womp. This isn't going to let all the Firefly fly to, fans down. Even though Alan Tyduck, or Tiddick, what I say his last name, is in this. He has he the Danger the, Boat. Yeah, he plays Danger Boat. Which there's a potential problematic moment. Well, it just depends on how, if you want to look for it. And if yeah. you, you can't just enjoy it yeah. for what it is. And go, okay, I see what is supposed to be happening. I don't think here. it was intentionally meant to be problematic. I think it's like if you read into it, yeah. Because I think it's one line of dialogue. I identify as a boat. That, Which, that's a funny one. Because it, yeah, but it also you know. it becomes kind of hacky where people are like, I identify as a, and then a you're Chinese like, okay, woman. They identify as a boat because of a trauma yeah. associated with flying, and then are you trying to, to insinuate that like the, trans yeah, it could mentality be, is But it doesn't linger on that in, in such a way, so I just feel like yeah. it was just a gag and a pretty throwaway gag. But also, like, there's the, it, you know, the, the boat's homosexual. Mm -hmm. So it's like, is that also part of the insinuations of the, the weird, is that just going deeper into like see all trans people are homosexual weird <laughs> mental cases I don't know I'm like, oh, I mean, the takes of parody I don't we don't know. technically know Ben Edlund's politics yeah I don't want to look into it find out all the nasty <laughs> shit it's just the age of like killing your heroes <laughs> I'd rather find out that Bill Cosby raped 50,000 women or whatever he did horrifically than that he voted for Trump <laughs> you know it's gotten to like that people are like who did he vote for Trump what fuck you know like I don't <laughs> so you guys gotta watch it I gotta say I, I understand terrible <laughs> mental compulsion a little bit better than willfully yeah I mean putting a check mark next to that box <laughs> no, I was high, it's like I played everything I played a lot of computers this last year. <laughs> and uh, hilariously enough, his next job is as the Joker in uh, the Harley Quinn cartoon. 
Oh, you know what it is? Tytek has a probably has a vocal studio in his home. He's, he's got like, this he's is, a good voice actor. This is the real gig, voice. you know. Yeah. I get to stay at home. I can record. Stuff. Since King Candy, he did King. He has been the voice in every animated Disney movie that's come out. Every single one he's played in since. Then. Yeah. It's like he became. Well, go-to yeah, he's part of the video. And when you talk about voice acting, we get to go right back to uh, Peter Serafinovich. We'll get that name down. Because he was the voice of Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace. Yeah. The so original. Not, so not like the Not cartoons. the cartoons, yeah. yeah. Like, and you're like, Darth Maul spoke? Yeah. Yeah, he's like, eh, now it's time for the Jedi to end. Or some kind of shit, I think. I don't even remember. Yeah. But I should know that. I'm sure he said, he, well, he spoke in Solo, too. But that was Ray Park. And okay. he, he was supposed to be Peter's, but uh, they replaced him at the last moment and just let Ray Park do the voice because it was cheaper than paying to people and he's got a bigger name now than just having Ray Park say some lines. Ray Park, you can just like, yeah, just say the lines. You know, and you don't have to do makeup, ADR. And he was pissed off because he was like, I, I get so weirded ball, by ADR ball. now. Yeah, I mean, you hear it and it's so jarring because we have all these awesome technologies. That's one speaker of the problems with Man is the ADRing of young Will Smith. The ADR and this seem to be and I would say right? they, be I, I guess I wouldn't say that's the problem. It's weird the way they fix the problem because that's a problem that's hard to get around. They because the ADRing, there's always this feeling of like the the mouth and the microphone, so you just have this closeness of all the audio as yeah. opposed to like right it's now. It's like on a cartoon, and all room. it all sounds like it's just coming out of the speakers instead of a direction. Yeah, and so in Gemini Man. In order to fix comes, that, they had like everybody's audio turned up in a way that made it seem. Closer. It's just the worst movie ever. <laughs> it's the so, most fascinating movie ever. It's because a game changer. It's like game changer movies are often good, but a game changer movie because the technology is a game changer. It's a, it's a screen, to be so bad. It's a screen test for way too many ideas at once. This is going to be something that is taught in classes later. Mm. Gemini, like, it's going to be amazing. A lot, it's a great year for movies. A lot of good stuff this year. A lot of good stuff. This, uh, yeah, I've been, we've been burned in the past from bad years of movies. It's, and like even the superhero fucking regurgitated, just overdone stuff. I mean, here we are. We're even reviewing a superhero thing right now. And that is kind of parroting what we're the saturation of all this superhero ness. I guess the, you know, the and like final thoughts this season. Uh, so the first season has like a big epic storyline. This is still a full storyline, but it has a lot more smaller moments where you could tell the the, the show was getting, getting focused. smaller. Tighten uh, it up. Yeah, so like a lot more of these gags having to do with uh, where superheroes hang out at the building together and eat. Yeah, like the staff room. It's, uh, it's kind of like your normal craft services yeah. at, a, at a movie. And I just have to say, nipple Doctor Strange, hilarious. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just don't think there's a few things to, to touch Gold on Star, for us. I don't know if Gold Star ever was intended to have a superpower. He's just, the, or Bronze Star. Bronze Star. Yeah, which I'm like, this dude was just hilarious the whole yeah. time. Because people, everybody knew him. Love, everybody, everybody loved, loved him. him. <laughs> and and the, they shouldn't have given him any dialogue. Because uh, the time, okay. one time he had a scene, I'm like, oh, he's... It, yeah. He's a chode. I don't even know the difference between them. Actually, is the chode just a small fat dick, or is it the space between your butthole and your dick? To be the space. I keep hearing that it's the, it means a small fat dick. So I don't want to call him a small fat dick when he's so the space between the nuts. You can't have a big chode then because that's the like a fat coffee dick. can dick. You know when you have a like a coffee can. Well, like dwarves, I imagine have coffee can chode dicks. I don't know, ladies or anybody who knows more about dicks. I shouldn't. Be gender specific. I'm sure. I mean, dick, guys touch dicks more than ladies, right? Uh, I mean, <laughs> no, it's touch my dick more than me. So down below, tell us what the chode is. But the, yeah, Gold Star was or Bronze Star was great. But I was blown away by the stretchy dude, Flexo. Or yeah, was it the Flex? Yeah, he was a great Flex on. Flex on, yeah. I kept going, this dude's got to be a bad guy just because he's got that fucking face. Yeah. And then you find out, oh, this dude, it's, uh, what's his name here? It's, uh, he got a cool ass name too. It was real small. Stephen Og. Yeah. Og, that's a cool. And he was Trevor from, uh, Grand Theft Auto V. Yeah. Yeah. Trevor Phillips. So, like, Tre so even the character model in the game looks like him. Yeah. And you probably recognize him as that douchebag on uh, 
Walking Dead right now. I don't know. I think he might be dead. I quit watching that show a while ago, but yes, Walking this, Dead. I was going to tell you that, that like, the great, is some of man? the great parts of Trevor. Simon on The Walking Dead. Trevor you know on Grand Theft Auto, he's a big, like, meth head. Okay, yeah, because so I'm not familiar so with So you can, you can go, you can play it, and you jump from character to character to character at will. Okay. And sometimes those characters are in the middle of doing something when you jump into them. So you'll, like, jump into Trevor, and he'll just be, like, Running down the street like half naked, wearing underwear, and beating somebody up because he's in a middle of meth binge. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, this guy won awards for playing that character. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just a lot of cool little shit in this movie or the in the series. Uh, Joan of Arc. I, they started hinting that there was a reason for the name, but we never really got a good answer. Yeah, there's a lot of setup in the show sometimes from the first season, the second season even, and so you saw like. Her being called Joan of Arc makes sense just in the story. It's a clever pun. Mm -hmm. But then also Arthur's mom is called Joan, and you're like, okay, this could be a setup that could pay off later, too. Yeah, like you start hinting, yeah. telling me that idea that maybe the tick is, uh, like, the Arthur manifests the tick. Yeah. And there might be some kind of clue in is, there. Is, uh, he, he loses his um And nobody knows who the tick ability. is or where he yeah. came from. He loses so that his, has to mean something. He loses some of his thinking ability a little bit when Arthur's far away. Uh, there's also part of the incident where the terror killed Arthur's dad that also has to do with Dot, where she starts blaming herself for not picking out clothes, clothes in time to leave. Yeah, and Dot's played oh. by... Uh, and she ends up with a power, too. Valerie Curry, who I remember yeah. from uh, the Blair Witch movie, mm -hmm. the remake, and uh, from fucking The Following. Well, I loved her on The Following. Yeah. And then I just found out, looking her up more today, that she's only five foot four. So, woo! Yeah, so I was thinking, right like, you could see Ben Edlund's love growth range. as a writer here, where he was probably going to turn the show into more about, like, this uh, story of, of Arthur and Dot, because there's some real meta stuff having to do with Dot now being part of the yeah, story. Yeah, there's a bigger story that they could explore, uh, and with this, powers. Like, a lot of stuff about family, and what... What really happened to the dad. Yeah. Because uh, there's little hints that, you know, the terror is... the kill him mm -hmm. but maybe there's something else going on there because mm -hmm. the Aegis is all super interested right from the beginning mm -hmm. so I thought that was interesting uh, one of the coolest supervillain names ever is also in this show though Which one? Lobster Hercules? yeah Lobster Hercules <laughs> now Lobster Hercules is <laughs> such a fresh name <laughs> and, and the costume is amazing there's there's really good set there's like so jokes, jokes that there. you can't catch Initially, yeah, visual like throwaways, but you they're and not even uh, focused on. Like, one of the things is the tick will say, like, Holy Mother, Holy Mother of Lobsters, yeah, so it's like Holy Mother of God or something. But then, lobsters, like, okay, yeah, the tick will say, something say God, like that. but then she is a mother of these little monster guys, but oh, you don't know yeah. that until like That's episodes she... later, and you're like, Oh, that was a joke so there that a, you it's you're so... playing a free future, yeah. Now, little cool little note that I wanted to throw out at you. That's, she's played by the voice of Lobster was or Lobster Hercules because it's I get the name right. It's played by Liz Vassy, uh -huh. who was Captain Liberty in the uh, the, old cartoon? the old series. Oh, the series. With oh, Patrick okay. Warburton. Oh, cool. So she actually got to play the Tick in two thousand and one, and now she got to play it in this. So a cool little callback. Uh, pr was a producer or like a writer on the show that uh comic dude uh, Griffin Newman okay. was on who was, plays Arthur. Oh. So there's little connections where they all started meeting each other and you can see where like the recommendations probably came mm -hmm. in. Oh, this guy could be Arthur. You know. Uh, so that was really great. Uh, but yeah, I knew John Hodgman was a villain right away. Uh, so the this, this shock surprise that he was the villain later was no surprise. Yeah. Uh, not that it, this show needed surprises because it wasn't oh. really that you know, it's almost because, like, talking about how the storytelling of the comic book is, mm -hmm. you need to have that obvious twist that you see coming, because if you're looking at the storytelling, you would see that coming. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was great. Uh, I wish there was a season three. It's still a fun show. Even as much as we've talked about, like, spoiling storylines and jokes, there's still a lot of other stuff in there's there. There's a lot to so enjoy funny. beyond, well, yeah, because yeah, there's so much, there's so much humor. Mm -hmm. And there's so much, the seriousness, too, there's humor in that. I mean, even the gag of the Tick getting a new costume in season two. Yeah. I've never seen another superhero reference it 
as self aware. <laughs> yeah. Other than and I mean, in the Marvel movies, they do it so bad. Yeah. Like the storytelling in Marvel movies, I get why Martin Scorsese hates them. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not just because I'm a DC fan, but I'm like Tony Stark's like, I just left just suit in the plane, Spider Man. Brand new suit. It's just in the plane for you. <laughs> <laughs> what? I want to have a lady knock your door in the middle of the night and bring you yet another different new suit. Oh, and I'm dead. <laughs> I was just like, what? Tony Stark, look, he cared that much about Spider-Man in advance. He was sending fat ass dude around to like give him new suits all the time. It's up to you, Spider-Man, to bring Phase Four together. Once I'm out of my contract's over, no one's gonna care about these piece of shit movies. What's going on? It's what's gonna happen. I mean, Captain Marvel wasn't bad, and I actually really I didn't think it was bad at all. Yeah. Uh, but without Spider-Man connecting Captain Marvel to the next it's, phase, no one I don't know if I had more fun with the soundtrack than I have had with, with Captain Marvel. And last Me and Travis time, were all singing uh, uh, the whole song. song at the end. Or what about like, <laughs> oh, jeez, to give. <laughs> it's just so fun around the space. I'm like, I like this song. But for an action scene, this feels off. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, jeez, to give. <laughs> I'm like, what? It's all super CGI flying around. I'm like, oh, they underestimated what they had the ability to do in this movie. Because sometimes the CGI looks like dog shit. <laughs> when she's got the helmet on, you're like, oh, no. I, I actually thought But that. hey, The Tick has a pretty good score. I love the opening oh, yeah. score. That uh, the composer was uh, Chris Bacon. So that's a tasty name. There's a, there's a uh, good animation for the for the intros of the yeah. episodes. It, it, it was, I, we watched, we didn't. Well, we might have fast forwarded through one or two of them. Yeah, I don't remember, but that's I've dug them. Uh, good, good, entertaining time. If you're gonna give yourself a weekend of something for a new show, laugh. If you watch like The Boys, and you you still have that, I want to get into some deconstructing superhero stuff. Less cynical, but still funny. Yeah, without the cynicism. Because yeah. if you go over to Watchmen, you're gonna get the cynicism. I guess I don't know what the new yeah. Watchmen show is about. Yeah. Jeremy Irons is in it, so it has to be good. He's never been anything bad picture of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, just him as profi around. Ha the red dragons <laughs> so fucking fresh. <laughs> just scared yet either. I don't know my cat is scared of red dragons. Alright, well thanks for checking in <laughs> this uh sure, season this two hour under- long <laughs> retro. Hey man, if you're gonna do a ten episode show, it's gonna well, be just makes up for the fact we haven't a video in like two months. Yeah, so let's uh it's got a lot of stuff to talk about. And a lot of sub schedule time changes. Uh, we'll try to get look for us on Patreon where you give us a dollar or something for uh, if we, you wasted an hour Send on this video. To put in the background. Yeah, we can definitely change up this tapestry. I guess we probably need to put an address thumbnail stuff too that people can. Yeah, we'll find that link down below. I don't know if to say it on the video for all you psychopaths out there. <laughs> Just come in here like, I saw this kid in one of the videos. I'm going to take her. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Just don't need that shit happening. <laughs> Fucking Natalie, goes, I told you, I told you it's gonna happen. <laughs> Why are you always jinxing these videos? It's just like in my dream. <laughs> <laughs> I read these crystals and they said it was, it was gonna happen. All right, man. I'm uh, Robson Gresham. I'm Sinclair Thompson. Don't let spoilers ruin your life.